it is almost unanimously agreed that throughout the entirety of the sim racing community, the brand with the hardest name to spell is Husingfeld. Even now, I'm still not completely sure I'm pronouncing it properly. However, despite their grammatical challenges, they still manage to be at the apex mountain of a lot of sim racers wish lists. Started by Niles Husingfeld in 2013 and based in the Netherlands, they commenced production of their sim racing line with one simple mission statement. To feel like you're driving a real racing car. They have refined their products throughout the years, but they have arrived at this, which many would consider the best passive pedal that money can buy for your sim racing setup. This is my review for the Husingfeld Ultimate Plus pedals. To kick things off, let's look at the hardware overview. After all, it is all in the details, and this is the overview for the Ultimate Plus pedal set. Now, what you're getting with these three pedals is something that has been through a rigorous testing process, a total of one million test cycles. They're all made out of CNC precision cut stainless seal with glass bead blasted finish, and if you want the three pedal set, it's going to cost you €1,437.02. The two pedal set without the clutch comes in slightly cheaper and if you've already bought the two pedal set and just need the clutch, that is slightly cheaper again. They all have hydraulic damping, they all consist of a full range 12 bit output for each pedal to give you that granular detail. And with regards to the features for the pedals, the throttle itself has a one way hydraulic damper with a load cell for true linear input. The brake has a dual stage brake system to simulate the brake pads for that realistic brake feeling, a 200 kilogram load cell which equates to 140 kilograms of actual applicable force, a two-way hydraulic damper and an elastomers which allow you to adjust it to nine separate resistance settings. The clutch itself features a regressive spring to give you that clutch-like feel and also has a two-way hydraulic damper. The pedals I had before the Husingveld Ultimates were the Fanatec V3 inverters and what frustrated me about that set was the limited adjustability. What attracted me to the Husingveld pedals was that you really can tweak these to your own specifications, again within a limit, but it's a lot more than a lot of other pedals on the market. Here we see a demonstration of the pedal face plates and by removing the central screw you can move those face plates up or down depending on your preferred foot position. I'm going to be completely honest, I really enjoyed the way these came set up out of the factory so I really did make minimal adjustments, but if you wish to adjust the pedal travel for the throttle and the clutch, you can do that by loosening the bolt here and adjusting the blue end stop to your own specifications. Another nice little touch is that you can adjust the preload to both the throttle and the clutch. Here we're looking at the clutch and if you just adjust this nut here and then tighten it you can adjust the preload applied. If you do wish to adjust the pedal force the throttle and the clutch also allow this. You simply adjust that bolt, slide it up and down and this changes the force curve and how the pedal responds under pressure. If your rig has a low degree of adjustability, you can also adjust the pedal angle. And as you can see here, there's a large range of which you can do this simply by adjusting this bolt and then sliding the pedal either up or down. Now, I've personally chosen to adjust the entire pedal plate myself and I just wanted to have these sat at the bottom. But if your rig is limited, this is a nice little feature to have. Last but not least is the brake resistance. And these can be adjusted to nine different settings with Husingfeld's elastomers. Now, I was very much a case of I set these and I left them and I was very happy with them. But if you really want to mess around with these, you can. It is a little bit fiddly to get them on and off and realistically you need to pull the rig out, particularly I've got my rig set in a confined space. But if you wish to do that, it's there for your disposal. What I would highlight is these are not a beginner set of pedals. There is a huge range of adjustability of which you can tweak and play with and you can get these set up exactly as you like them, but they can be very intimidating. There is a plethora of information in the Husingfeld instruction book, but again, it really needs to be studied and this is only a brief overview. For me, the unboxing process is really important. I'm only going to touch upon this briefly because ultimately, <laughs> get it? If you like these, you're going to buy them yourself anyway. But for me, it forms your first impression of a product and how you feel about them once you get them in your hands. And I've been thinking about these Husingfeld pedals for a long time and the unboxing process was an absolute joy. You get a lovely envelope here with a nice little huge instruction booklet, a little welcome note, thank you for choosing Husingfeld Sim Racing products, and whoa, whoa, the boys in their glory and a lot of stickers which you can put on your laptop, sim rig or whatever. I put on my laptop, that's my guilty pleasure. 
Unveiling the cardboard here and voila, we have the throttle, the brake and the clutch securely packaged. In the two boxes we get, in the first instance, wrench, allen keys, cables and, you know, the appropriate elastomers, nine of which, you know, so you, well, you can adjust these to nine different resistance settings for the brake. I will notice I needed a longer cable for my sim rig, but, you know, they can't, you know, cater for everybody. This is the Husingvolt Ultimate Controller box. Now, I found these a little bit difficult. These aren't lined up for standard aluminium profile, so I did need to jimmy rig a piece of MDF in order to mount it beneath my pedal deck. The mounting process was very easy and I've got a Simlab P1X and these pedals are bolted directly to a Simlab base plate. I will note if you haven't got a footrest you're probably going to need one because I think without that these would have been fairly uncomfortable and they're designed to be used with a footrest. I've got this adjusted quite high but you also can adjust the pedal height as we've discussed a little bit earlier. One thing to note is the included hardware I have switched out here which you will notice and I'm pretty sure it would have worked absolutely fine, but I just prefer hex head hardware and I like a little bit of a greater diameter to cover the slot it's going into. The included hardware did cover the slot, but it, the, the diameter of it was only slightly larger and uh, it's, I like hex head hardware, so just that's what I did. As you can see here, you can slide these to the left or the right as much as you want, and particularly if you like to heel and toe, this is particularly important for me, so I can get the brake and the throttle lined up, and you can also adjust them forwards and backwards exactly as you want, so you can get that roll on your foot if that's how you heel and toe, or if you want to press your foot down and swing your heel out, if that's how you want to do it either. Um, it's a great level of adjustability, and this was one of the main selling points for me, is I liked to be able to adjust these to the left and right. As you can see here, this is a little bit of MDF I had to secure to the bottom of my aluminium profile because the holes in the included um, Husingfeld smart box don't quite line up with the aluminium profile that I had, which I believe was standard. Um, so, you know, I did have to cut a bit of MDF and then I cut that MDF and put it into the aluminium profile, which added a little bit on. So it would be nice to see a bracket Husingfeld that would go straight into the aluminium profile so I don't have to muck around with that, but hey, you can't have everything. The way you control your Husingfeld Ultimate Plus pedals is through Husingfeld's own bespoke software, Smart Control Live, and I just can't emphasize how good and how powerful this piece of software is. There is an almost an infinite level of adjustability. If you really wish to kind of a tweak, tweak the minutiae of these pedals to get them singing exactly as you want to. Now, this isn't going to be a complete comprehensive overview of this. That really is its own separate video, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview to demonstrate the power of this software. As you can see, this is the calibration menu just set up in front of you, and it simply is a case of hitting start calibration once all the pedals are connected. And as you can see, the throttle, the brake, and the clutch are all nicely calibrated. Updating firmware is nice and simple. You just select the firmware file, click go, and there are a list of instructions on the screen to follow. Now, this is where the meat and potatoes are with regards to tweaking how each version of your throttle, brake, and clutch all respond to different conditions. Now, this is just my default setup, and I tend to race with linear curves. Now, what that means is my input is one-to-one -one with the output. So for every 1% of pressure, I get 1% of output, more or less. Again, this changes a little bit regards dead zones. What's a dead zone, I hear you ask? Well, for example, when I'm depressing the throttle, I used to have a tendency to kind of leave my foot about here. So I increased my dead zone, which meant I got 100% power. If I decreased my dead zone to here, as you can see, with full depression of my foot on the pedal, I'm only getting 98% power. So I tweaked my dead zone to about 12%, and that allowed me to compensate for that. And you can do that with the clutch and the brake and the throttle and mess around with it as much as you want to to get it just as you like it. Now, what are these curves for? Now, this again, this is its own separate tutorial, but to put it nice and simply, for example, if I'm racing in the rain, if you want to do this, if you don't want the throttle to be as sensitive as it is when it's racing normally, so for example, for my inputs, I need to put more input for more output. So as you can see there, I've probably got about what? 15, 20% input at the moment, and I've only got 7% output. And as you can see, with more depression, this goes up the curve to the point where bang, we're on the linear progression now, and it proceeds up the output curve with equal amounts of input pressure. Now, this really is a level pedal control, and you can really get really stuck into this, and it becomes quite obsessive, but it's a good tool if you just want to go into it nice and gently. If you don't, just set it to linear, play with your dead zones and then jump into it as much as you want to later down the line. 
The most important thing when buying a set of pedals is the driving experience. It really doesn't matter how much adjustability you have, how pretty the box looks. If they drive rubbish, they're a waste of money. Do they think these improved with the Fanatec V3 inverted? Absolutely. These were just a tremendous joy to use and it felt like going from a toy to a real piece of sim racing machinery. My level of consistency improved and I definitely found my lap times were coming down primarily from the level of you know, f fine detail I was, able to, I was able to produce from the brake particularly. So particularly when trail braking, I was able to adjust and modulate that and you know, ultimately control the car under braking in a much finer fashion than I ever had done before. Ultimately, these are an absolute joy to drive with and I have zero regrets. From a durability standpoint, I've had these pedals for just over a year and a half and they are absolutely bomb-proof. No loosening, no noises, nothing coming apart, no technical failures, they are as good as the first day I bought them. From a customer service standpoint, I haven't had to use Husingfeldt's customer service, but from everything I read on the internet, I hear no complaints across the board. So the big question that will be on a lot of your minds watching right now is should you buy these? And the simple answer is, Yes, absolutely, go do it, you'll have an amazing time, zero regrets. However, pragmatically, these are a big financial investment. And if you are not into sim racing yet and you're looking for your first pedals, I would recommend the Junior set, although yes, we all end up escalating and buying more and more expensive hardware, but there are a few where this hobby isn't for you. Ultimately, <laughs> again, um, I escalated up through the Logitech to the Fanatec pedals, and then I've ended up at something that feels like a bit of motorsport hardware and these Husingvelt Pluses do not disappoint at all. There are the Husingvelt Sprints which are slightly cheaper but I can't really comment on them because I have no experience of them and you know for right or wrong I just wanted the best of the best and I went for the Ultimate Plus pedals. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What are you using on your rig right now? Are you looking at these? Do you want them? Have you just got them? What do you think? If you found value in this like subscribe and I'll see you guys very very soon. Take it easy. Bye for now.